us tonight. He is one of Denmark's few most outstanding architects. He is the founder of one of Denmark's most outstanding firms. He is personally responsible for the design quality in that firm. And in a country in which uh, design competitions are a requisite, he has won first place in 20 major design competitions and commissions. His Scanticon Continuing Education Center in Aarhus, Denmark, has led to several other significant continuing education center commissions, including the Siemens Conglomerate Management Institution Center in Germany, and in conjunction with an American firm, the Scanticon Princeton Conference Center, which just opened in Princeton, New Jersey, uh, in the past month. Uh, I will tell you in just one minute, he will tell you perhaps about his new project in Colorado. It is a result of his collaboration with the landscape architect on the project in Princeton. Uh, that got architect and landscape architect and client together out in Colorado. His international work includes, in addition, an ambassadorial residence in Turkey, a school in Norway, proposed hotels for the West Indies and Colorado, and the Phillips Petroleum Corporation presidential headquarters in Eindhoven, Holland. He has been a professional, a professor, and an occasional visitor at the School of Architecture in Aarhus, Denmark. He was a visiting professor here in the College of Architecture and Planning in 1975. There are about uh, a half dozen alumni of his uh, fourth year design studio when he was here that are, that are in the audience uh, tonight. Uh, one of his uh, uh, employees is here tonight, and Frederick, if you would stand, we're very happy to have you here. Frederick uh, Bengor. Bengor. <laughs> Julie Monk, who is now with Welton Beckett in the Chicago office, uh, worked in, in uh, Knu's office in Aarhus uh, for six months on her internship. We're very happy to welcome back here tonight uh, as a lecturer, Knut Fries. Knut? Oh, oh, I'm really happy to be here again. I've had uh, some very, very good months when I was here in 1975. And I is very glad to be back again and to meet some of my good old friends. Uh, I will uh, show you a little about, take a picture through the history of our firm and try to start with the uh, buildings we did about. 1965 and show you what we do today. Uh, I have, a, I, I would like to say some small philosophic word first, or try to. You see, <clears throat> a house will never be better than it has been conceived. Without good thoughts, without much preceding deliberation, we cannot create healthy contemporary architecture. A good house must have sub substance, a meaning that goes beyond the material. It is difficult to define what this substance is. It is not only a good function, it also involves being faithful to the society you built for, expressing time and culture, expressing an attitude. The, stuff, the substance is the soul of the house. It is not at all conceived by the architect alone. It emerges from a long process in which the client 
and his advisors in a dialogue which may be tough and fatiguing, but also happy and inspiring, seek the physical, the physical answer to the questions of the situation. Experience tells that the quality of the final product is directly proportional to the involvement the client and his advisors together have been able to put into the cooperation. The tools of the architect are the form and the materials. It is the proportions in space and surface, and it is the character and color of the surface which may lead to good architecture when combined successfully. Tile and wood, ceramic tile and wood are good tools, but it is also a mistake, of course, to believe that a building becomes good or beautiful simply because it is made of bricks or wood. It is the way we administer a material that decides whether or not we will derive benefit and pleasure from its aesthetic possibilities. Almost all historical and valuable buildings in Denmark are made of brick. They have stood through generations. They last and they have aged with beauty. Time leaves its marks, but it is a virtue that a wall may tell a story. What could do all the smooth and glittering modern materials do? They, they lose their beauty if they do not look newly polished and nice. They demand maintenance, polishing, washing, painting and repairing. They must keep on looking new and fresh like the day the house was built. Otherwise, they seem primitive and neglected. In our office, we also like other pure materials like concrete, iron, copper, and lead. We want to be modern. We don't like today's nostalgic tendencies. A house should be not look like. I do not like the very deliberate use of images, motives, and effects from the past, which has become good form in the last few years. The Danish architect, Anne Jacobsen, once said, we can steal from our own time, but not from the architecture of the past, but then we can learn from it. In in 1964-65, we had built a small hotel in the sand dunes of Rømø on the western coast of Jotland in Denmark. At that time, Danish architecture was characterized by, and to a certain extent, internationally famous for sober and careful treatment of details. All buildings in Denmark should be nice and moderate, and Danish architects competed to design the most academic and artful details. As a reaction to the formal neatness, we long to get an opportunity to work with more simplicity and robustness, robustness. We had been on a study tour to Switzerland and had been inspired by Harlem Sidon near Bern. On Rømø, the environment gave a convincing argument for building vigorous concrete houses. In the dunes near the Kolk, as the place is called, exists the naked reality in the form of west wind, beach cottages, ice cream kiosks, bowling lanes, and even corner shops. 
it takes a strong back to get along in this environment. And therefore the hotel was built like a farm with low wings closed outwards and open inwards. The sand grey concrete and the turf on the roof which has come to look exactly like the, like the vegetation in the area ties the building and the landscape closely together. The building is not some foreign matter, but a part of the natural surroundings. Pure colors applied in spots on doors and windows or painted directly on the concrete wall around the window recess give more life and excitement to the big surfaces. The house stands in the sand, the dunes move and the contours along the sides of the house change incessantly. Consequently, it seemed natural to build a house, the walls of which stretched from foundation to roof in the same material without any accentuation of basis. <clears throat> On the island of Dunen, we built a hotel in a completely different natural setting. The hotel is situated in a forest on a slope toward the little belt, a narrow water between the peninsula, peninsula Shola, Jotland and the island Dune. It was obvious that both rooms and restaurants should be facing the water. The view is beautiful and exciting too because of the busy traffic of vessels from the Baltic to the Kattegat and the North Sea. The, <coughs> the orientation of the house, the sloping ground and the wish for a concentrated plan arrangement naturally resulted in a terrace house, as the architecture of a terrace house is first and foremost sculptural. It is important to simplify the choice of the materials. The vivid form is best perceived on the background of quiet material structure. Walls, columns, beams, and the edges of the roof so important for this house had to be alike in material for sculptural reasons. The place has a lush, almost dark green appearance with great oaks, many beaches, and an ivy floor. A red or yellow brick house didn't really fit into the place and the white painted building seemed uh, too rough to us. On the other hand, we felt that a light concrete, concrete gray color would blend gently with the surroundings and be beautiful with all the green. Today, cascades of green plants wells out on roofs, terraces, and parapet walls and ties the building to the forest floor. We have tried to match the interior and the exterior of the house. Interior walls are all made of concrete or plastered roughly in natural color and without paint. On the ceilings we have lime washed and brushed shatterboards which appears silver gray. As a contrast to the rough materials, carpets, textiles, and furniture are made in deep, strong colors. Colors and decoration have a good effect on a gray background and, and add to making the interior warm and vivid.
that <coughs> training center of the Association of Contractors is situated near Ebelshoft on a peninsula in eastern Jutland. Even though it is eastern Jutland, the great features of the landscape makes a rather rough impression which appeals to shelter and enclosure. The plan is simple and un uncomplicated. Basically a house built round a square triangle with a drive in one corner. The surrounding rolling configuration of the ground runs directly into the individual wings of the house which at the same time keep the, the interior level and courtyard plateau together. Two of the four wings contain more than 40 sink rooms. A third wing contains the kitchen region there and staff living quarters and the fourth which is oriented to, to the view over the town and the water and the only one in two full, full stories contains a lobby and living rooms upstairs and classrooms downstairs here. From the courtyard there is access to all access to all four wings yes. via a sun covered walkway to classrooms, kitchen staff wings. The courtyard constitutes a strong contrast to the open con surrounding configuration of the ground. This is where you stay when you are outside and where you walk when moving from one wing to another. The courtyard is furnished with a few mountain pines, concrete cylinders to sit on and a pool which courses must spawn when the stout builders have to find their way back to their rooms after evenings with beer and aquavit. Outside white paint has been used as a kind of exclamation mark to accentuate window recesses and to alleviate the somewhat sad appearance of the concrete on the many rainy days which we have in Denmark. Inside the colors appear strong on wood walls, doors, carpets and upholstery. Uh, in the years around 1970, the building of training and conference centers in Denmark flourished. <coughs> the accelerating demand for supplementary education and professional and interdisciplinary contact entailed a corresponding demand for suitable education and meeting places. Of course, schools, university hotels were used to a great extent, but their possible applications were limited because they either applied to narrow professional circles or they offer too few educational facilities. In conference centers built with this <coughs> built with this purpose in mind, you can best ensure through well planned programs and with an advanced educational technique that good results will come of the time and effort invested. When you can be trained, eat, sleep and cultivate the more casual togetherness under one roof, there are special conditions for creating a good and intensive educational environment. Skanticon Scandinavian Training and Conference Center was created with this purpose in mind in cooperation between the Society of Engineers of Denmark and the Danish Medical Association. Our task was to design the house 
that had to live up to those good intentions. The site has <coughs> configurational advantages in itself, a beautiful enclosing edge of the forest, a view over Aarhus Bay, and an inspiring configuration of the ground in the form of a domed hill top. In our design, we emphasize adapting the building to the landscape and the natural attractions, the forest and the sea were utilized. The house should not be a house at all, just an accentuation of the hill. From all the rooms in the building, you should only be able to see nature and never feel that you want you were in a big block of buildings. Whether you are on the top story of the building or at ground level, the situation is the same. You overlook grass surfaces with field flowers. In an, an, in an environment characterized by TV sets and computers, it is doubly important that the physical setting is human and warm. When the goal-oriented participants, thank you, thank you. Could you raise the mic up? We'll get more volume. Oh. Thank you. Five. Oh. Thank you. When the goal-oriented uh, participants wake up in the morning and look outside, it would be good if they felt that the glass roofs and the small daisies are provocation against everything perfectionistic. I'm sorry, I have to find out here. Uh, something has happened. <laughs> we, we must have the... Uh, it, it's not that bad. It'll be better than a little. This seems to be there. Yes, it can't scan on your Oh, you got me yeah. Right. Now we uh, do the different the events here. Then there then is an engine. Okay. Yes. Bildungscentrum Führungskreis in Felderfing near Starnberger See at Munich, Germany is a training center for Siemens managers. We got this project after having won an arranged competition. I think we won because our house was the simplest and was best adapted to the landscape. We paid due respect to trees and the configuration of the ground and gave a higher priority to the total solution, solution of building and landscape than to the building alone. In such beautiful surroundings, it is a virtue for a house to appear smaller than it really is. The complex consists of two separated building volumes which form 
an interjection yard-like area. One building contains the rooms, the, like a hotel, the other is built in terraces and contains classrooms and common facilities such as restaurant, living rooms and recreational rooms. The yard is an important part of the architectonic composition. It is a con contrast to the park outside. It intensifies the experience when you move around the buildings. There are two connections between yard and the park, one outside and the other inside. The outside, one is a glass slope which covers the tunnel between the hotel and the common building. The inside one is a central room which is designed as a stairwell with terraces and which connects all three stories from the main entrance to the outside green surroundings. And here you have the terraces. The central room is a place where people meet during the breaks between classes, drink coffees, relax and enjoy the view of Starnberger Sea. This building was built in close cooperation with Siemens. Being an architect is not only building houses, it is also meeting people. I had a rewarding time in Munich with good experiences and close connections with a number of people. I went to birthday parties and October beer festival parties. I felt the unity in the Siemens company and was told Siemens jokes like the one about a confidential clerk who was going to move into a Siemens apartment which had belonged to a senior clerk, to a senior clerk. Company rules stipulate that there must be a cover on top of the toilet seat if your position is senior clerk or higher, but absolutely not cover if your position is lower. Then a Siemens fitter came to remove the cover. Despite this, his great efforts and many attempts, he didn't succeed. The me <coughs> mechanism has rusted solidly. The man gives up and reports the problem to the company top. After heavy deliberations, the decision is made up there. We shall have to promote Herr Schulze to senior clerk. In Siemens, they want to be very consistent. It's a German company. It's a central hall. Um, uh, we, <coughs> there's a radiator. It's not that good to see it immediately. There's a staircase down and here. Living room, library. <coughs> Order, it's a town hall. Order is a small town south of Aarhus. We have built their new town hall. Prosaically judges just the town hall is an office building. 
In this case, with approximately 70 people for the administration staff, and then the assembly rooms necessary for the local politicians, the town council hall and meeting rooms. Furthermore, however, the town hall is a service center for the citizens with a number of public functions, public assistance office, health insurance society, national register, tax collectors offices, and so on. We have greatly emphasized that this house should be the citizen's house, a pleasant house which in size and proportion should become a natural part of the town scale. Not a monumental building demonstrating power, but not an anonymous house either. The citizens have talked a lot about this building which has been both cursed and placed in numerous letters to the editor. It has never been immaterial to them. The town hall's garden is <coughs> the transition to the town. Here you have the opportunity to adapt yourself before stepping through the main entrance. A sectional view of the building gives a full picture of both the functions and the spatial design. The sectional view also shows how much emphasis has been put on that side of the town hall environment that is open to the public. The materials are brick outside and inside, lead on the roof and ceramic tile on the floors. The deep Slightly heavy color tone of the light tile materials form the background for sweeping color treatment of office equipment, furniture, furniture and textiles. The painter Emil Gregersen, with whom we often cooperate, has turned the whole building into one great color composition, a painting which has become an in dispensable part of the architecture. It was our experience with this building too that as far as office equipment, furniture and lighting is concerned, the best general impression is achieved when these things have been made together with the house. When watched out of context, the home made things probably cannot always compare favorably with the perfect industrialized design. But as parts of an overall picture, they are often much richer because they are a logical consequence of the building. They are chil children of the same family. Tiste Town Hall. The town of Tiste is a, <coughs> the town of Tiste is a small town at the Limfjord which cuts across Jutland. Its town hall should not only be practical, a practical solution to the administrative problems of the municipal borough, it should also fill a void in the townscape finalize the town center and round off the harbor front. One of the ideas behind the project is that the town horse house <laughs> should be not be isolated isolated. Quite to the contrary, it should join up with the neighboring houses and the existing streets. The measures of buildings, the shape of the roof, and the materials are chosen with a view to harmony with the old townhouses in order that the town hall may become part of an urban whole. The 
the uh, endeavors to adapt the town hall to the town are seen on the facade facing the harbor, but is most clearly felt in the little street there, where the two office wings are the ribbon buildings, only connected by the airy superstructure of the lobby across it. And the two buildings, one here, the other one there, and there you had the connecting glass roof. The lobby is part there, it's the lobby, is part of the street, an indoor room with an outdoor character in design and materials. It distributes the walkways to the individual administrations, but also due to its design, it is an attractive place of sojourn to the citizens, whether or not they have some business to attend to in the town hall. People come here, meet and talk, like on a street bench. The cobblestone flooring, brick facades, a bird cage, which appeals to children, rare plants, stones and running water contribute in making the place attractive to the public. As the inquiry offices are situated internally in the individual administrations, the lobby may be utilized independently of the administration and thus used for cultural arrangement as outside office hours. In Denmark, <clears throat> many competitions have been arranged concerning local administration buildings. Now and then we have been lucky enough to win the first prize. For instance, here in Nykøbing on the island of Mott, which is situated in the Limfjord. The site is ideal both as regards the landscape and the town adjacent to the fjord and only a short distance from the town center. The task was both to design the building and to create a recreational area along the fjord on a disused railway area. Yes, you have the fjord here and the city is up here. The building is here, and you have in the background the city, or the town, it's a small town. For the sake of the town silhouette and the view of the fjord from the, the houses of the town, the building is low and in one story. Functionally, a one-story building is the best solution for a small town. It is easy to get inside from the street. All administrations are equally accessible and all sections may be extended independently. The plan of the house is a finger solution. The administrations are placed in each their own wings so that they may work independently. All the administration swings open into a lobby which holds the inquire uh, counters. The area opens to the public and the offices are separated by a counter zone that is so spacious that the inter-administration traffic may take place, place immediately behind the counters. So, yeah. 
All the wings are connected in U-shape with sleeves, boot, tank and surfaces to the lobby for the placement of the inquire, inquiry counters. The lobby which faces the town and is the most distinguished looking room is covered by a slanting roof. Toward east, the lobby ends in the cafeteria which is built in in the same uh, prof roof profile. The slanting roof is covered with cover sheets. This is a technically outstanding and in the long term economical material. To give a warm and pleasant material character, the supporting structure of the lobby is made of round wood columns and sturdy wood beams. The brick walls of the wings are made in the traditional way with weight carrying facades and weight carrying columns, columns on both sides of the central corridors. The partition walls between offices and towards halls are movable. The arrangement is flexible. Offices may, may be made bigger or smaller or joined from facade to facade. This way of building a town hall has almost became the typical solution in small Danish towns. A great number of senior high schools have been built in Denmark during the last 10 to 15 years. Today more than 40% of all young people apply for admission to the senior high schools. This has created a great dem uh, demand for new senior high school buildings. We built our first one in 1969. It is situated in an Aarhus suburb in the remains of an old village which has quickly been changed and ruined. The project is a one subject classroom school this means that the individual subjects are taught in each their own rooms and that the students have to move from class to class. The room the students always return to and where they stay during breaks is the central room. The idea was to design the central room like a large town square and to place as many classrooms as possible immediately adjacent to the square. Prior to the construction of this building, all senior high schools has been built in the traditional pattern with uh, corridors in the middle and classrooms to the sides. The central room is utilized as pathway, an indoor place of sojourn, a wardrobe for clothes and books and a di and dining room. The central room, which is situated in the center of the building, gets its light partly through the roof and partly from four small built-in age rooms. And this is the room, the central room. The auditorium is utilized outside school hours for drama and con Concerts. And on such occasions, the central uh, room serves as the spacious lobby. When many people are present, the central room and the auditorium may be knocked into one room by hoisting up a wall. The glass roofs have been created that the market Danish weather in spring and fall becomes a little more Italian. Apart from this, the climate conditions in such a building are great because we have used heavy natural materials everywhere. No plastic brick walls, stone floors and wood ceilings. The projecting and building of this house went very fast. The whole thing took one year and a half. 
we erected some prefabricated columns, put concrete girders lengthwise and light wood structures crosswise. Uh, <clears throat> in principle, we made four parallel wings which were then short-circuited by glass roof. In this way, the building was covered and during the winter, the bricks for the walls could be laid in peace and quiet. The whole arrangement of roof rooms was made independent of the supporting structure. While the school at Risco, you saw it just now, uh, was built from inside. The one at Skanderborg has been designed more in accordance with the exterior conditions. Risco came to appear as it does because of function and substance. Skanderborg is an expression of a more wild form, in a way a more traditional architectural work. The building is situated on a slope at the end of a gorge. These factors made the terrace form natural. The classrooms are in two stories and the central room is in the lower level. Being the most important room, the central room has the most beautiful facing, <coughs> beautiful location facing the garden and the trees. Much brick and many tile floors, ceramic tile floors, have been used in this school. Wood has been used for the whole roof structure, which is supported by plywood beams. Oh. Yeah. The senior high school, this one, Ikas Senior High School, is situated in an open field country in the middle of Jordan. Like a Danish farm, it is built of four wings round a quarter angle, which is sheltered from the water, from the weather. The school is U-shaped with three classroom, classroom wings and the central room built together. And with a detached covered sports center on the, uh, on the fourth side of the yard. The classrooms are overlooking gear green areas and enclose the big central room inside. To reduce <coughs> internal distances and to give the building appropriate dimensions in the open country, the classroom wings are built in two stories. A large slanting roof is supported by the buildings and slopes down to the yard. The roof covers the central room which thus gets the desired close contact with both classroom stories. The central room contains all the common functions of the school library, cafeteria, places of sojourn, places for studying, and so on. As a matter of fact, everything that goes on outside the classrooms. The dark brown brick and the reddish brown curtain roofs are the dominant materials. The senior high school in Vibor forms <clears throat> part of a future town center. The school is situated along an east to west stretching main path for pedestrians which leads from a shopping center to an outdoor uh, sports center. It's a public sidewalk here. There's no other buildings on this picture because of uh, the the school is the first building in such a new uh, 
development in. In accordance with recent Danish school policy, the risk was to avoid an isolated and secluded site. The boundaries between the open areas of the school and the public roads are floating. Yeah. To express the relationship between the outdoor sports center and the town and its citizens, the senior high school buildings and the covered sports center are placed on either side of the main path. In Vibor, we have tried to bring all rooms into close contact with the central room by a combination of one and two storey buildings. This, this one. The school consists of a long two storey building and a number of short one storey wings perpendicular to it. The two-story house contains the classrooms for the humanities and theoretical subjects all facing north. The one-story wings contain administration offices and special classrooms dividing according to their functional connections and facing the built-in yard. The central room is designed like a street under a slanting roof which connects the high and the low buildings. A street with balconies, terraces and stair towers. A street appealing to life and activity. An uh, attempt to reconcile the architecture with the thoughts and the lifestyle of the young generation. There's some degree, uh, pieces of art which later have put in the small courtyards. It's given by the state of Denmark. The, we have an art fund called Staten's Kunstfond, and it gives uh, sculptures and decorations to, to uh, 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 public buildings. A concrete house on the Jutland side of the little build, right across from the Stauerby Skor Hotel you saw early on. Ten years uh, went by between the building of the two houses. And I suppose we have become a little more daring in the meantime. And here we have tried to utilize the possibilities of the concrete a little more. This family house was built during Denmark's affluent years when everything was possible. It was built by an elderly couple who are interested in music, art and architecture. The house was designed during conversations, sessions and meetings which often lasted all the night. No standard solutions were allowed, allowed, everything had to be adapted to the special wishes and lifestyles of those two uh, people. It was an expensive but very interesting job for us.
In uh, Kalundborg, on the island of Sealand, we have built a covered sports center and a swimming stadium. It's <clears throat> the new sports center building has an extensive number of rooms and an arena for ball games with room for 1,500 spectators. I don't think that you were uh, very impressed by such uh, numbers. I shouldn't hear in this content tell the numbers of spectators and such thing because it's, I don't, I think it's very little to, to you. A swimming stadium with several pools, a shooting gallery, several exercise rooms, restaurants and club rooms, as well as a kitchen for large congresses and meetings, which still take place in an old adjacent hall. There's a swimming area and a normal sports area, the foyers and the club, club area, club uh, rooms up here. Yes. The <clears throat> delicate side has be been more decisive, decisive for the design of the building than the extensive number of different rooms. The sitting in the center of Calonbor between the old town from the Middle Ages with a church and the new part of town with an educational institution at the foot of the hill has been an abnormal challenge as far as that kind of buildings are concerned. The roof misses an important architectonic element in sports center buildings of this kind is first and foremost treated out of consideration to the silhouette of the old part of town and the small neighboring houses of the old Mungesugel get some pictures later. The outside form of the roof reflects the spaciousness necessary for the indoor function and at the same time it constitutes a slightly rolling and continuous surface that follows the slope of the ground. The building is depressed into the ground in order to disturb the image of the church and the high part of the t in order not to disturb the image of the church and the high part of the town. <clears throat> Where it adjoins Mungesugel, the large roof surfaces have been scaled down to create a better harmony with the proportions of the small town. of the small townhouses, yes. As the site of the building is on a slope, it has been necessary to use concrete for floors and walls. At the time, same time, the form of the roof has demanded a wood structure. Inside, the rooms are formed by large laminated wood arcs that span the sports center, foyer, and swimming stadium. In Aarhus, we have built a church which probably is greatly influenced by the old Danish village churches from the Middle Ages. The church is part of a whole plan with a kindergarten and a day nursery, which is an angular in an angular form, embrace the church. In the design of the interior of the building, it has been emphasized that it should be a simple and pure expression for the evangelic service. We have aimed at a bright and a gentle room and tried to avoid emotionalism. It's the model of the room and here is reality. 
the interior of the church and the congregational room should be able to function together and sep <coughs> both together and separately. The church room and the other room here. To, the aim has been to solve this problem not only functionally but architectonically too. The church uh, consists of two sturdy side walls, the one here, the other out here, from which the roof is suspended. The roof is split up into variously sloping surfaces separated by light slits. Lengthwise, the ceilings thus give the room an arc form which is accentuated by daylight. The daylight is di directed to to toward the altar in order to avoid that the congregation is blinded by direct light. The church is made of brick and whitewashed outside and inside. The ceilings are covered with rough boards painted dark blue. The roof is terra black. This is one our most recent and inexpensive buildings. It is a factory building of the company producing lighting designs by us. The material is exclusively asbestos cement sheets. Yes, in uh, Princeton, New Jersey, 60 miles south of New York, a new conference hotel is being built by the Danish Scanticon. The site is owned and led by the uh, Princeton University. To us, your appearance as a a uh, thing which is quite uh, in another way here, that is uh, the American universities, uh, contrary to the Scandinavian ones at least, are well known for cooperation with private firms on research. On research. Princeton University has laid out a forest area for development by private firms who want to place research departments here. It's all that. Uh, in order to serve these firms and the whole great industrial area which stretches up to New York, a conference center was wanted and we got to design it because we had designed uh, Scanticon in Aarhus. This, the conference center, is a decentralized solution, contrary to Scanticon in Aarhus, which is uh, completely concentrated in one block. This is uh, due to the site of the center. It is 27,000 square meters. It's uh, 270, more than 270,000 square feet. Uh, it is uh, in a forest here. We wanted to keep the large beech and oak uh, trees between the blocks. 
the conference center concede. I show you here one of the first uh, drawings we did when we had the first meeting, and it's almost, it's just as we had to make it on the wall and try to find out how should such a conference center look. It's very primitive drawings now here. But uh, the first, uh, it consists of some guest wings, and our first idea was some guest wings going into the forest here, and then we should have a, a, a restaurant center here, uh, this building with restaurants here and the conference building here. Mm -hmm. And we should have a, a, a walkway, uh, an arcade, con combining the two things here and with the guest, with the hotel part of it here. It is a three-story building. This is one-story buildings. And then we should have the a, a roof uh, combining a steep roof combining the one and the two, uh, the three-story and the one-story building. But it's sort of an, an, an uh, uh, island solution, you could call it here. This is, here's a, one of the next steps where we, the conference, uh, uh, the three the paths has changed a little. Uh, that's, we thought we should have the, an arcade here going up to a, a city square, sort of a town square here, a town square here, restaurant square, a conference square, and then again should have the uh, guest room's wing running into the forest. And uh, uh, as the big lobby should be under the steep roof, going from the, this side, uh, the, the three-story buildings to the arcade, something like that. In the last end, the plan wa uh, has been, you have the conference center here, you have moved the, the restaurant part of it out to the west, so it can be free of uh, other buildings with directly connecting out here to the forest. You have the guest room wings here, the lobby, and you have, we still have the arcade, but it has been a little more variated now, but it's still, a, 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 it's, it's a unit divided from all the other units. You will see later on the photos. Yes, so it is the arcade we have here, and the conference part, the restaurants, the guest room wings, the lobby here, and there's a model we did. And one of the, the lobby should be under such a, uh, a, a roof, you can say, which is f hold free from the, the arcade down here and hold free from the three-story buildings. And then you have some big timber construction, construction supported by the high building here. So it's, you have light coming in here and you have light coming in there. And here you see the first uh, 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 perspective drawing we did of the, of the room. The place here is used as a place of arrival and sojourn. We have imagined it as having the qualities of an Italian piazza with walking traffic and outdoor surface service. The yacht uh, is the face of the conference hotel outwardly. I think it's very important that you have a nice entrance to such a hotel. On this point, I feel that the 
project deviates from the American norm in some way, and I hope it will be remembered for this uh, by the, the guests. Uh, in America, you normally build high hotels. Sometimes they are really dashing and of high architectonic quality. Uh, but they are always, I think so, detached monuments, used things you can walk around and look up at. You uh, rarely see anything being done with the space between the buildings, markets, squares, and streets, which we uh, value so much in, uh, I think we do in, in Europe. I think that most American hotels are, uh, not most, but very many are high silos with rooms in them, now and then standing on a two-story plinth with a restaurant at street level and a banquet room upstairs. All the uh, movement in, in the ordinary American hotel is trap. I feel so. I lived in many rooms after this sort and without spatial experiences uh, with a full elevator shafts. People flock before small elevator doors and spend their time waiting and waiting. Our hotel does not compare favorably with the expensive American hotels when it comes to hotel, maybe trite hotel luxury. We uh, will try to compete by building an ordinary house that functions well and by offering spatial experiences to the guests when they move around inside and outside. We have used our own Scandinavian scale and now that the house is uh, finished, uh, you'll be able to see if it is applicable here too. Uh, I have to apologize. You always, when you do such a building, you always miss, make mistakes and you try the one time to correct the former ones, but then you make some new. We, uh, we have uh, those big stones here. They have been, the, we came, suddenly we came down, we saw that they had made those uh, big granite poles. And then we immediately said, the next of them you have to do, we cut off, they have to uh, go deeper in the soil. And they did so. But then later on, we couldn't get the, the, get the client to afford to cut off the rest of them. So now, People, when they come and ask us what is, uh, what is the idea about those different highs of stones, and I have only then one answer. This is, those ones, they are for the horses, and those ones, they are for the donkeys. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. It's, um, those chairs here, they are, uh, our client, he was, uh, he, he was a little angry upon us because we always said that we wanted, uh, we would have Danish furniture. We tried to put Danish furniture in all the buildings. And, and uh, the client was, uh, he thought it was more expensive. I, I know it isn't, but he thought so. And he would have, then when we came to the garden furniture, he said, no more Danish over here, we buy them here. And then uh, we bought some chairs in, in Boston, I think it was. And when later on, when they have come, uh, they have been made by Bull Care. So it was a, a good one. Yes. Here you see the 
uh, the guest room wings coming out in the parlors. It's very simple uh, uh, buildings, you can see. And there you have the corner with the with the swimming pool and the terrace up here. It's out to the west. We are here. And this is the swimming pool and the gables of the guest room wings. Over here you have the restaurant that you see a little of the arcade unit there. It's beautiful and I'm so disappointed uh, because we at home, we cannot get, we have better clever engineers and they make norms for breaks now. We have in Denmark the very good clay and we can make some of the best breaks in the world. We can, we have beautiful colors of breaks, but the engineer, we have also, what is said, we have very clever engineers and they have found out that the brakes should have, a, you know, a certain strength and they not, they have to be very standardized now. And it means that the color of our brakes, they are going to be more and more standard and, and even uh, in uh, not so with uh, all those beautiful variations we have in our old brake buildings. And then you come here to New Jersey and you have been told that in America you can't get uh, good uh, brakes. And there we got uh, very, here we got very beautiful brakes, very rough brakes in very different colors and uh, variations. So it's, uh, in reality you will see it's a very beautiful uh, uh, brake work. I mean this is, uh, this is because we got beautiful American brakes. Uh, if the Danish engineers should, if we, uh, today would, would it be, uh, we have some very beautiful, good uh, old domes in Denmark, and if the, um, the engineers at home, uh, if it was today, they would find out that those churches, they could not support themselves. There would, be, there would have been no churches today if we have had those engineers for five, six hundred years ago. And, <coughs> It is the lobby where you see the timber construction supporting the roof and you have the light coming in up and down here. I don't know if the, I have to take on, is, is this a, is a clear enough? Oh yes. So. Yes, and what we, I just said before, it's, it's, I think it's nice when you move around in a hotel that you have some experience. When you are moving indoor, then you have experience to the outside. You see the trees, you see the green, and you feel, and you can exactly feel where you are in a building because of that, that uh, indoor-outdoor connection. Or I see, feel it's very much more nice to, to move up to the rooms of a uh, staircase in two stories or so, uh, then, then the, the, uh, this transport uh, through the black hole. Uh, you must have, I think we have done a nice swimming pool here, so let's try to. Yes. And now I'll not talk. I think I will, I will uh, just show now some newer projects, but it's, it's runs. I promise you will go fast now. So. It's a uh, new senior high school in Northern Jutland. That's, uh, you see it's a very concentrated, you have a walkway through the building also made by granite and in here you have all, you can, it's a two-story building, one-story building and you have all the connection into this room in the middle, uh, uh, 
severely in Denmark, we compete in being able to, to uh, make the smallest, the most concentrated plan out of such uh, a high school. And here, I think that this is our uh, most concentrated solution. Another one where you have the corner here as the central hall but with short distance, special rooms here and there and the more normal rooms in the two story building here. After uh, during the years I have no, I have come in the United States. First time it was in when I was here in seventy, one of years seventy five. Uh, I I think there's a, that something has changed here. It is uh, the carpets they have, uh, especially in the hotels and so. They they they, they grow up first. They have covered the, the the floors. Now they have. They are moving up all everywhere uh, on the walls and so on. So I, I think, in this way, I think it's, uh, I don't like so much carpet as uh, we find uh, in, in all the hotels here. And it's, it's uh, I know it's everywhere that it's difficult. To, that's a time now when people prefer carpets to, to uh, stone uh, floors, but I'm sure that they will regret it very soon, if not for the last many years. And now only a couple of, because we, I have found things which we are doing now, you know, in Denmark, the activity is it's very low now, so we have to, to, we have to, we work with small things and small jobs maybe, but it's very, it's nice to, here we have had, a, we had to add to a, a, an old water mill, a, a, a new part, so that the man could have a, a house to live in. Such things we are doing now, also. I only showed you a couple of pictures. And this is, I have a very ro romantic uh, partner who is living near a lake in, in such a, a building here. And this is his house. Another house we did, it, just to tell you that some places, you, if you are careful, you can in Denmark. Some places film something which are almost like Colorado. So there are such, there's a sea and there's a nice situation for such a, a summer house. And we are also restoring so pre, uh, quite simple old Danish farms and putting in some kitchens and, and new furniture and make them a little better. So, finished.